The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate you growling and prowling us out here. We have the Dow Industrials down 57, NASDAQ up 2, S&P's off 3, Gold flat, fourteen seventy one an ounce. You get silver up five cents, seventeen dollars five cents an ounce. Light sweet crude off a buck fourteen, fifty five dollars ninety cents a barrel. Notes and bonds. You get the ten year up two ticks, trading one twenty nine thirteen. The thirty year up twelve at one fifty nine oh five. King dollar, king dollar up twenty five ticks, trading ninety seven eight twenty. Euro is at one ten. Yen is at one oh eight point five eight, and the pound is at one twenty nine to one U S dollar. And I uh, heard you doing that update. You had a fast market there, man. Uh, that, what happened that, at the opening bell, man? That S&P, man, that was a fast market. And we're talking about fast markets. We That's are right. talking Mr. Kevin Hinks and his team at TD Ameritrade Think or Swim. And don't forget, folks, every trading day right here at TFNN, you want to understand options, option strategies, futures, outstanding program, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time. If you haven't test driven the Think or Swim platform yet, you have everything to win and nothing to lose, folks. Bottom line, come over to our website at TFNN, hit the banner, bring it up. You can trade paper money with Kevin and his team each and every trading day. Kevin Hanks, what's going on? Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Tommy. I believe what this morning is teaching us is that in a retail environment that is showing a pretty strong U.S. consumer, guess what? There's still going to be winners and losers. Yeah. In, in, in terms of cold and in terms of Home Depot, I'm going to push back on the rest of the world and say these numbers from Home Depot weren't as bad as everyone thinks. I think there's a very emotional trade going on right now in Home Depot because the stock is at its all time high. But I think these numbers still look pretty good in Home Depot. Kohl's, not so much. Kohl's has got some problems figuring out where they belong in the whole retail uh, idea. Yeah, you know what's amazing about, let's look at Home Depot folks and, and Lowe's, okay? So, you know, I remember this specifically when, when the housing market has gone along, you know, as it has, meaning it's been bullish for what, six, seven, eight years, whatever that is, right? It seems that Home Depot always gets the first leg up in, in this market because you have more contractors yep. at Home Depot, you know, more wholesale, not wholesale, but in between I would wholesale say so. and retail. Lowe's might out. be a little bit more retail customer it's, versus it's, it's Home it's Depot. It's more beautiful, exactly. And if you look at Lowe's this morning, you know, as Kevin's, there's a great point there, Kevin, okay? Lowe's is only down to $1.60, man, okay? Yeah. So it's not the sector, you know? Yeah. You know, so, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's been up here for quite some time, but it's really intriguing because I remember this at, on two cycles now. And I never realized, I realized at the last cycle that. Lowe's is not a Home Depot. You know, Lowe's is a, um, it would be like a Target in a Walmart, I think. Do you know what I mean? Uh, it could be. They, it they could just be. have, they just have a, they have more retail stuff. I'm than, sure Lowe's would take issue with that type oh, of classification. They, they would. But, I, they, they that's would. right, Tommy. Yeah. And so would Marvin Ellison, yeah. the yeah. CEO of Lowe's, who's from Home Depot. Yeah. And yeah. trying to catch up with them. Right. Yeah. So that's part of the real fun discussion we're going to have today because, remember, Lowe's is tomorrow morning. Yeah. Cool. So we're going to see, you know, Home Depot, You, you. I mean, there's a lot of case to be made for Home Depot. Listen, how many, you know, they came out with their same store sale, 3.6% growth. Yeah. Well, the, 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 the street was looking for 4.7% growth. I was like, wait a minute, 3.6% growth. How many retailers out there would take that number in a heartbeat, 3.6% oh. growth in, in same-store sales. But apparently that was disappointing for, uh, for Home Depot traders. And here's the thing, they're, they're investing, right? And you, you, you know what investing means. That means you're putting money into the company that you hope to pay dividends later. Sure. And they're doing things like updating stores, updating the digital platform, improving the supply chain, all these things that hopefully are going to streamline and make this business better down the road. So I just don't see
see as much negative in Home Depot as some other people do. Yeah, and when we were talking, it was it 3.1%, Kevin? 3.7, I believe. 3.6. Okay. Tom, Tom, he has the numbers up now. We're talking about 3.6 on 108 yeah. billion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, the I only mean, thing I mentioned. I mean, that's pretty good. I, I, I fail. I have a problem looking at that number and not being at least a little bit impressed. Now, here's the only thing, right? We got the three-year growth on their revenue, Kevin, 7.26%. So yeah. if, if that's what's getting priced in, then the market's saying, hold on, we're at 3.6, 3.7%. Um, that's a big number, man. They've been growing. Yeah. I mean, 2016, they were at 88 billion. 2020, they're coming in at 110. That's $22 billion in revenue on a yearly basis. They're going to add over four years from 2016 to 2020. Just staggering, man. And their earnings per share, they're up at about 10 bucks. And I, and I don't know if you've heard the ads yet, right? I, the first ad I heard was two days ago, right? Home Depot, check this out, folks, now has same day delivery for no cost. It, that's right. the word. Like, yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah. That, that is now, like... Not on everything, but on a big list of items. They're even, even though I can't imagine a scenario how Home Depot can deliver most of the products that, that they have in Home Depot. Seriously. They're still doing it in some cases. Yeah. But remember something. Here's the last point I want to make when you think about Home Depot. This quarter and the quarter coming up, that's not their bread and butter. If your family comes to you, if Tommy comes to you, Tom, and says, Dad, I bought you something for Christmas at Home Depot, you might be a little disappointed. Their big quarter <laughs> is the second quarter, that, that you know, April, May, June yes. quarter, when right. people are starting to redo their homes and stuff. So this is not their sweet spot time of the year on the calendar. So I, I just think there's a lot of good in these numbers at Home Depot. I think, you know, the biggest problem is, and Walmart had the same problem, guys. The stock's at the all-time high. You can't disappoint on anything yeah. right now with stocks at all-time highs. Yeah, and so it, 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 this number that's coming out in lows, in fact, we just brought it up in the TD platform, what, what is that saying? Well, so we got the Analyze plat, uh, tab up there in the Thinkorswim platform. $7.81, man. Oh, that's a big number, That is man. a big move. <laughs> that one-day expected yeah. move, Kevin, for lows. It's only trading 114, man. You're talking about $7.80. That is a big move yeah, as the market. Yeah, that's what, 6%? Something yeah. Something like that? Yeah, that's, a, that's on the higher end for sure. Maybe the market a little uh, bit uh, worried with moves. Home yeah. Depot coming out and saying, yeah. whoa, whoa, what's going to happen tomorrow morning, man? Yeah. yeah, but you know what? All that does, it makes it more fun, right? Because oh. so, now, if you think about it, you have to trade lows off already making a move, pre-earnings. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So there, there, there's just a lot to go into it, and we'll do it, though. Don't worry. The good news is we'll do it today on Fast Market. That's a beautiful thing. And, you know, what Kevin's talking about, folks, if you've never seen Fast Market, is that they'll set up these paper trades so that you can really understand what spreads are all about, what butterflies are all about, you know. Those multi-leg options. Maybe. Right, which, which, is, which is so cool because we're talking defined risk on all of these, okay? So before, you know, you move away from the computer, you know what your risk is. And, you know, that's, that's always important. I'd say it's particularly important when you're at all-time highs. I mean, just look at lows, you know? right? We haven't even had their earnings. Yesterday, we're at 116.80. You trade down to 111.50 on the Home Depot number. You're back up to almost 116 on the open. You're down to 113. In the, I mean, this is wild. You got to love it. Right here, folks, 45 minutes from now. Kevin, you have a great day, safe day. We look forward to the program, 45 minutes. Thanks for having me on, guys. Thanks, Thank Kevin. You. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. We have the Dow down 48. NASDAQ up 8. S&P's off 2. Come right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's down 44. Nasdaq's up 13. S&P's are off one. You get uh, gold uh, down a buck 60. Can we go into the Dow? I just wanted to see yeah. what Home Depot is doing to the Dow. Oh, because yeah. Home Depot, I heard earlier from an analyst, I think they're the fourth biggest because of the price tag on that, Home Depot that, shares. It is a big one, right. That they would be adding or declining. And there you go. Look 83 points alone. Without them, you'd have the Dow positive above 40. Yeah. yeah. And then you get uh, Dow DuPont uh, putting eight negative. Big Mac putting five. Putting a positive. You got Visa 13. Boeing nine. Yeah. It was quite a story, man, today in the uh, Wall Street Journal. It was about American Express. Okay. Uh, they're, they're paying off uh, AXP. Let's pull this up. Yeah, one more time. Again. It's uh, it's just the opposite. Like of years ago, it used to be so hard to get an American Express, um, you know, to accept American Express cards. All right, I'm going back 20 years now. Okay, you know, but if you could always get Visa or Mastercard pretty easy, right? If you were a merchant, to get American Express, sometimes it block you out. Okay, you know, um, you had to really have a, a great credit rating to, in order to get the American Express to accept it, right? Now, what this, this, this article is about is that they're trying to catch up because what, all, what American Express also had done, folks, okay, and, and it's changed because we've been taking it for years, but their, their rate was always like a percent and a quarter bigger than Visa and MasterCard because it's a separate deal. You know what I'm saying? You have a deal with Visa and MasterCard sure. in the banking unit. You have a separate deal with American Express. Sorry, their rate for who? The business or the consumer? The, the business. For you okay. and I, when we're accepting an American Express card. Okay, we had you know, to pay more? Or? We had to pay more. Okay. We had to pay more on the transaction. Like what okay. ends up happening, let's say the transaction of Visa and MasterCard That's is 2.5%. Two, two yeah. Okay, so it'd be 2.5% on Visa and MasterCard, and, and then what? Three and, three and a quarter. And okay. okay. Now, this article is about they're trying to catch up, and they're paying the large companies payments from 10000 to 450000 to take the American Express card. Isn't that wild? Yeah. I mean, I, mean, I guess it depends on what you're talking about. You're, you're talking about a retailer, not the size of Target or something, but, you know, yeah, you're going to pay them a half a million right. dollars or something. <laughs> totally. You're I, talking about, you yeah. know, your Quickie Mart on the, on the corner. You're not right. going to be paying them as much. But this is a number that stood out to me. In 2018, Visa and MasterCard accepted at some 1.3 million more U.S. locations than Amex, which had 10.3. Yeah. 
So it's, you know, it's all, that's a 10% number, man. If, if Amex at 10.3, then you have Visa and MasterCard at, what is that, 11.6 yeah. um, locations. In 2016, Amex said it would close the gap by the end of the year. Since then, annual dollar targets for its internal sales, people signing up new merchants have increased at a double-digit pace, according to current former employees. Pretty yeah. interesting. Yeah. It is. And, you know, American Express has been very good at getting young college students and, you know, folks your age onto that platform. And that's because you know they've I mean? changed dramatically. I yeah. see no difference in an right. Amex versus a Visa versus no, a MasterCard. Know. You know, no. anybody, right. not anybody, but I'm sure, you know, no, they're pretty similar these days. So if they're pretty similar, then why would you get an Amex if you can't use it everywhere? Hey, for if, sure. If it's not yeah. uh, a better deal for, you know, I think it used to come with better rewards as well, maybe, or right. better something for the consumer. It was, Because yeah. why would you get it as a consumer? If it's used at less places, if you have an equal deal. Like, right. as in, why wouldn't you use a Visa, right? Right. If Visa's accepted everywhere. And why would you use an Amex? Right. If it's accepted not as many places. That's there has right. to be a, that's an right. advantage so, to that. That's right. So they went from a, a card that, you know, I'm going back 20 years yes, now. Yes, yeah, yeah. They went from a card that basically you pay it off every month. Right. You know, versus... Just like the same, with the, uh, the yeah, same with credit. the other ones that now, yeah. bottom line, no one pays it off when, you know, no, not, no, no one sure. pays it off. No, no, but, I understand. But right. the differential is pretty amazing. And that was part of the difference, right? Yes. But yeah. I think it did. It came with greater rewards, you know, and oh, yeah. whether you got your, your and lounge then, at the then, airport. What do you call it? The cachet that you get at American Express. I got a gold, I got a platinum. I sure. Got, you know, yeah. people, people yep. would go for those. Definitely. Some of the higher volume equities out here today. Uh, yeah, Chesapeake Energy just keeps that fifty-nine cents now. That's, yep. uh, they're going to put that out of its misery. Uh, you get Macy's down a buck fifty. Uh, that's down ten percent. Right? Roku with again some volatility, man. They're down dramatically. Yeah, that that that's stock down. just continues that's to rock and roll bucks. both ways. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and Uber Technology. I heard uh, he sold. Uh, did he sell all the shares now? No, only about a third. It sounds dramatic, Ooh. but he's a third. How much money is that? Almost a billion dollars. Eight hundred eighty-two yeah. million. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. Though. Well, let's click on it because it's interesting um, how this goes. Um, so continues to shrink his holding. The Uber former CEO and co-founder. So six point one million shares since Thursday for one hundred and seventy-one million, and that offloads thirty-three million shares so far. Eight hundred eighty-two million. That represents about a third of the stake. Let's see, so, and of course, we're all familiar, if you've been following, the lockup period ended, stocks has slumped 40% since the IPO, and he was ousted two years ago, you know, so he's created another fund yeah. that he's going into. You know what he's doing? Now, this is so intriguing, folks, and he's got the Saudi fund behind him. It's, I, it's, I, I believe it's iCloud, and what iCloud Kitchen, it's iCloud Kitchen, and what is he going to do? He's opening, um, yeah, there it is, Cloud Kitchens. Yep. And what it is is that in major, you know, cities, you open, you know, huge, you know, warehouse, basically. You have, you know, 15 different kitchens inside it, specifically just to food sell delivery, food, right. food delivery. That's it. Do you know what I mean? Uber Eats, he has a, he has a background no, in, in how that world totally. is going and changing. Totally. Uh, he's worth $3.4 billion. A wow. lot of that tied up still in Uber, though, yeah. to put things in context. I said to you at the break. Um, it's not like a CEO. He probably has some animosity towards the company that ousted him. Sure. Why would you keep your entire net worth in a company that told you to take a hike? Right. You know, it's not as if he's the CEO in control. That would be a dramatic story if he was still the CEO and he oh, was yeah. selling these shares. Right. Uh, very different. I mean, I uh, he did not leave voluntarily. He was ousted from that company. So I wouldn't eat too much into it. But he's if anybody has an idea what Uber's going to do long term, he would be one of the best. And so oh, taking that money yeah. out... But uh, I often say, you know, why would you not diversify yourself with that kind of wealth? Yeah. Especially if you have no control over the company that it's all invested in. And, and even when Bill Gates was divesting out of Microsoft, now Microsoft ended up being a great story that keeps going up and up sure. and up. But the reality, that would be the proper thing to do. Risk versus reward. Yeah. And, and you know, I mean, I mean, Gates was chairman of that company for a long time oh, after yeah. he was CEO, though. Right. So it's not right. a familiar. And, and there's no animosity when he makes the choice to leave versus uh, getting ousted from the own company, oh, yeah. you know, before it even goes public. That's, no, that's no. A, a tough spot. No doubt. Yeah. Let's go take a look at the bond market. So this just refuses to back off. And this is with, you know, the market's at all-time highs, folks, okay? So, you know, it, it's unusual, but it is what it is. Um, you know, you get the 30-year up uh, nine ticks out here. You got inside the range, and we'll see whether you're going to get another sign of strength.
You know, that, that's... Uh, and what is unusual there when you say markets at all-time highs in that the blue? That mo the most times, if markets that are all-time highs, they're, they're selling the bond market because okay. it's like there's so much more money in the stock market, basically. Sure, sure. You know what I mean? okay. I just want to walk through, yep. That is like, okay, I, sure. I, you know, let's, but that, oh, yeah. it's, it's there, you know what I mean? There's no doubt about it. Um, you know, there's a story over there, if you can find it. Sure, um, where are we going? On... Like, who's the guys you went to school with? Warby Parker? That son, Warby it, Parker? Yeah. Okay. They, they bought something at $441 million or something. Listen, yeah, maybe we can find this, it. This, this, we will find it on the way back. This is a pretty cool story. I mean, just as to, you know, how they started that company and got going, right? Yeah, okay. We'll pull it up. I Dow. Dow down on 52. NASDAQ up 13. S&P's up one and a half. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. Folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, yeah, so th this is quite a success story. I mean... It is. And to jump around, so I was fortunate, man. I went to a great high school right around Boston, Noble and Greeno. We'll give them yeah. a plug. Nobles, dead of mass. And uh, Jeff Rader, he was a year under me, I believe, played football with them. So he's going on to have quite a successful story, man. So Warby Parker, one of the first companies. And also, we'll bring it over as well, because if you're familiar with the, the shaving revolution, right? Harry's, 
We'll give them a plug as well. And there is Jeff Rader, who I went to school. So, so he is now at the helm, I believe, of Harry's or co-founder of the, that company. You have Jen, Jeff Rader and Andy Katz, but then you back things over. Pretty and uh, there he is as well. So pretty remarkable the yeah. story he's had um, going on for some serious success, man. Seriously. And now they're getting into... That's into... Contacts, right? Yeah, contacts. Yeah. So they, they made their money in, in frames, right? Yep. And they've really been... Uh, they first, to put it in, they made their money in frames online. Right. You know, that they revolutionized to say, and, and the story goes, because we pulled it up, that they were students, they broke their glasses, um, glasses, as you know, your glasses. Yeah. I mean, just an insane price level to do that. Seriously. And so they started making stylish frames available online, um very trendy, and then they kind of work that into having some retail presence. Yeah, uh, I believe they have a place in Tampa by University of Tampa as well. Um, the stores are beautiful, and as they say, the staircase at Warby Parker's library-like headquarters, and that's, I think, familiar to what their retail presence usually is like. It's, it's quite a presence they put together in New York. So uh, to tell employees about the eyewear retailer's future. There have been some modest milestones to celebrate, including a new collection of frames handcrafted in Italy and a store opening in the King of Prussia shopping mall outside of Philadelphia, That's where incredible. I happen to reside my senior year near yeah. Villanova. Uh, the big reveal was on Gilboa's face, or rather it was in his eyeballs. Uh, so the, today, November 19th, company plans to unveil Scout, a line of daily contact lenses. First time Warby Parker retail whose $95 tortoiseshell frames are ubiquitous in co-working spaces and third-wave coffee shops, oh, wow. has expanded beyond eyeglasses since Gilboa and co-chief executive Neil Blumenthal started the company almost a decade ago. So at $440 for a year's supply, the lenses will be slightly cheaper than many daily contacts, but will be sold with what Warby says will be a much improved ordering process. And I think that's where, you know, really things that's came in. That's expensive. It is. See. If it's slightly less, you know, it's it's all perspective, I guess. If it's yeah. less than what you're going to be spending and the ordering process. That's why I mentioned, you know, the online deal. They just didn't create glasses, right? right. They did it online. They kind of changed the ease of which you could just go on, click exactly. buttons, get those glasses. So, uh, yeah, one of several events, 2,000 employees appropriately excited for the product that seems impossible to get excited about. This feels orders of magnitude larger than everything that we've done while they're cheerleading, for yeah, sure. Yeah. From the branding to it being entirely new product category, they're saying. Yeah, that's quite... The next line's pretty cool. If anyone could make contact lenses cool, it would be Wabi Paka. And, yeah. you know, that's why I mentioned the fact of their stores and all that stuff. So, right. Um, right. you know, because you really had this aura, this excitement, this... Uh, you know, that went along with their their brand. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Big time. You, can, yeah. you know, it's, it's yeah. Frames, people, I mean, it, it's amazing how many different frames there are. And they're all plastic. I was just showing Tommy, if I didn't have insurance, I mean, frames are like 400 bucks. It's like, that is it, the it, truth. It's like, are you kidding me? That is the truth. 877-927-6648. Yeah. Let's go overseas and take a look. So, you know, last night, it looks like they, uh, the Hong Kong, most of the, Kids that are in there now, they either got them out. There's like 50 left in there, right? I, I'm not sure. I yeah. know that a lot had been arrested as right. in walking out voluntarily, thankfully. Right. If, if they are 18 or older, I believe, they're being arrested. If they're under that age, they are not. Not sure what exactly is happening, but they yeah. are not being arrested, thankfully. I think that would, you know, when you're talking about children underage in terms of, you know, being arrested, and especially being arrested in China, where you might say bye-bye to freedom for a while. Yeah. So you had the Hang Sang. Yeah. I mean, that, it reacted. The oh. bottom line went up 412 bucks. Yeah. Um, you know, it had volume behind the move too. So we'll see whether that's going to shake out. But. I mean, you look at that chart, you wouldn't know what's going on over there no, for, you for the type of. I mean, I saw no. a video last night just online of a police van pulling up, and I chuckled because it was just so tantalizing. Um, and it was hit with one of those fire bombs, and the whole thing blew up. And hopefully, the people in that police van were okay because it was just engulfed in flames. The police van had to back up. That's where you really get worried, man, in terms of the escalation that could ensue. Totally. Totally. Yeah. Let's go take a look at a few of the uh, gold equities. We'll go look at the GDX out here. So bottom line, gold's kind of in a consolidation. You know, we had, we got some good volume yesterday. You're going to see this, you know, wasn't a lot of price movement. We had 26.74 to 27.21. Not bad. But you can see that expansion, 49 million, which is not bad. So if we get another expansion today, and what does happen with the GDX, folks, it's, the last trade of the day can almost be a quarter of the uh, volume uh, inside it because that's the, in this case, I think it's uh, Vector's uh, State Street. 
They're basically keeping the, uh, it's a uh, Vanek um, vectors, they, in order to keep the net asset value correct. You know, so they, they throw a huge amount of volume in at the end of the day, particularly if you get a big day up or down, okay? That's when it really gets wild. So yeah, we'll see where that uh, shakes out. If we actually look at the gold market, that, <coughs> excuse that down a buck and a half right now. You get a sideways move out here. You had some, you had a rejection of lower price out there yesterday. Uh, we go to the pound. We look at the pound. We'll be talking about the pound pretty soon, man. I mean, yeah. I don't want to push time ahead, but no. <laughs> and know. I think we're getting. You're getting. There's a debate going on over there between um, Corbin and Johnson, I believe, at Is 9 p.m. England or maybe 8 p.m. England. I believe it's 3 p.m. our time. Oh, cool. There will be a debate um, between the two of them, and I guess that's um, a little bit extra special because just like over in over here. There's more than two people running. So this will be actually the debate, though, where it's only the two of them okay. running. Uh, but what's also interesting is that it's not like over here where you're voting for a president. Over there, you're voting for your local MP. I know. And then you vote for the local MP. Whoever gets the most MPs, that's who wins. Yeah. So it's really interesting where it's, over it's, here, if you were voting for the House members, right, and then whoever got the most House members, that's who decided the president. That would be a correlating way to how things get decided yeah. over there. So even if that debate shakes out one way or the other, it would seem that it should matter who your local MP is that you're oh, electing yeah. because you can have varying degrees of extreme and more moderate that still might fall on one side of the aisle or the other, yeah. just like you do here. Oh, there's no doubt, man. Yeah. There's no doubt. Yeah. Let's go take a look at that yen. So the yen is teetering right again at this 109 area, which if you're a bull in the gold market, you don't want it near it. Um, I guess 108.55. This 109.29, that's the number I do not want that to go over. All right, we'll so, talk to our man Teddy Cakes that tomorrow at yeah, this time. Yeah, seriously, man. Yeah. You know, so uh, what has happened, the euro looks like it's set up to get to higher price. The euro right now is kind of laying there at 110, but I think 112 is the top of the consolidation. No, it's not really a consolidation, but that's the last swing high. I mean, the market is optimistic yeah. of how things will go. Is it December 14th, December 12th? We'll have to get that number for that election. But it seems like the market, yeah. euro, pound as well, pretty much okay. I do. I, yeah. think, I think that they just want an answer. Yeah, I the agree. Market. You know any, mean? you know, most people will say in right. any market, right, right, uncertainty. That's the biggest deal right. with the trade deal. You just got something done. You could get over the hump of whatever turmoil you have to get over right. and look forward to the future. But as long as there's uncertainty, yeah. I mean, you see it with Boeing, right? While this is all is out there, we'll talk about that maybe, you know, before the end of the show. But the uncertainty is Something. just uh, when you can't price in a risk, the market hates that. Right. Yeah. Someone just hit the Dow, too. Look at that. Dow's down 71. Nasdaq's up to 12. S&P's off, too. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. 
Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks, and we get our man, Mr. Basil Chapman. He's going to be riding that wave tonight with all his subscribers. Uh, he's going to be doing a workshop tonight, folks, 5 to 6.30 Eastern Standard Time. You can be a subscriber real easy to, to not only his great newsletter, that'll get you into the subscriber event tonight. Just come over to our website, at TFNN. You'll see the opening call and the featured content. You just hit subscribe. You can get it for a month, six months, or a year. You'll be in this workshop tonight. Um, great workshop. He always does great workshops. And it's pretty cool. We're literally at all-time highs, man. Yeah. Basil deals in peaks. Right. Peak A, B, C, D, E, F. Have we seen a G? We might as well, oh, man. A we G's, might as well. G is really dangerous. Yeah. Um, and so Basil taking subscriber feedback. It's always great when, you know, those are the people following along on his newsletter closely enough, right. more closely than anybody else, obviously. He's been taking feedback by request. Um, you know, subscribers were just talking about Basil. Could you... Kind of walk us through how you're picking these stocks that have done well this year. What should you know techniques that you really go through? So he's going to be talking about the Chapman wave notation, moving averages. He talks about divergence all the time, the arc and cup formations, rhythm of price movement, and of course sectors and stocks oh, to yeah. watch. Keep them on your radar. With what are we at? Five weeks, six weeks left in the calendar year coming into 2020. Um, I'll be interested. Basil talks about, you know, cycles, rotation. Basil talks about as well. I'll be interested to hear what he has to say about the rotation, whether that will be something that plays into next year. And, uh, yeah, that's going to be live tonight, 90 minutes, 5 till 6.30. Basil always does a great job for subscribers. And new subscribers, 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers. And so I encourage everybody, great day to sign up. Seriously. You also gain access to the archives. You can really, I mean, for 30 days with a money-back guarantee, you get the five archives, you get the 90-minute webinar, you get his Chapman Wave notation, right. you get the trades he made last year, what he was talking about, how he made those trades, and they've been great winners, 15 to 30%. And those were the numbers when Basil put this together three weeks ago. The market's moved since then, man. Yeah. I wonder if there's still 15 to 30 or right. if there are even bigger numbers in there as well. And, and what happens, folks, which is pretty cool, I mean, if you happen to be doing something for 5 to 6.30 Eastern <laughs> Standard Time tonight, the program's archived, That's so right. you can listen to it many times as you want. That's right. You know? It'll be up there at least by tomorrow right. morning, midday, right. and you can access right. it as many times as you want right on your account page, right on that subscriber section. So check it out, yeah. 90 Minutes. Basil always does a great job, always prepared, and does a great workshop for his yeah. subscribers. We look forward to it. So, so I like this story, man. You brought it yeah. up. Let's get into this it. This is pretty intense. You talk about corporate governance issues, man. So right. we got the chairman of the SEC basically touting auto mailer emails to rationalize taking power away from smaller shareholders. That's, right. that's what I took away from right. this article as that's you right. took it. Um, so you have the SEC chairman, Jay Clayton, handed a policy win to corporate executives this month. He pointed to a surprising source of support, a mailbag full of encouragement from ordinary Americans. Yeah. Well, that sounds innocent enough. Sure. You know, I mean, right. I, I like to think that if you mail somebody who's in charge of government something that everybody no, can have a say, right? right? Well, you know what? 
it's unfortunate that so often it's corporate America and uh, the elected officials who are supposed to have Americans' best interests at heart. So to hear Clayton tell it, these folks are really focused on the intricacies of the corporate shareholder voting process. Some of the letters that struck me the most came from long-term Main Street investors, including an Army veteran, a Marine veteran, police officer, retired teacher, public servant, single mom, retirees. He hit, he hit all they the, always push the, the, same the hot garbage. topics, right. man. I mean, it's always the, the police, the veterans, the, it's the same thing. And garbage, you know what? Right? It should bunch yeah. BS because right. it doesn't even hold water when the fact that this is not a high-level investigation you had to do. We'll get into it. A close look at seven of the letters and about two dozen others submitted to the SEC by supposedly regular people show they're a product of a misleading and laughably clumsy. That's the real key. It wasn't even in, you know, right. in depth, okay? This was obvious to anybody. I'm sure he knew it. Check out that face. Good man. Yeah, right. Public Pu relations campaign by corporate interests. Yeah. So the retired teacher, Pauline Yee, said she never wrote a letter, although her signature was hers. Military vets, turns out they're the brother and cousin of the chairman of 60 Plus Associates, a Virginia-based advocacy group paid by corporate supporters of the SEC initiative. That single mom, data embedded in the electronically submitted letter, says someone at 60 Plus wrote it. The retired couple, their son-in-law runs 60 Plus. I never wrote the letter, said one of the retirees, reached by phone. What's this all about? Then there's the public servant Clay mentioned. Mary Reed's letter has sharp words for proxy advisors, firms that counsel fund companies on how to vote at shareholder meetings. But when reached by phone, the retired state worker said she wasn't familiar with the term. She said the letter originated with a public affairs firm that contacted her out of the blue. They wrote it, and I allowed them to use my name after I read it. She said, I didn't go digging into all of this. Unbelievable, right? It really is, man. So um, the SEC declined to comment. Yeah. Um, of course they did. Right. And so it, it goes, even the casual, this is where really, this is, the, yeah. right. even a casual reading of the letters shows something amiss. Four of the seven bear the same unusual letter, an out of context phrase inserted into the SEC's mailing address. The same mistake turns up in 20 of the other letters. This is an automated bot-like program, okay? Right. And the phrase is, mailing to the secretary, a coalition of growth companies is all, that's not what you write when you're mailing the SEC a letter about an initiative, okay? That just happens to be probably what they programmed into this automated program to yeah. send out all these emails. And what it really digs down to, which is a bummer, is at issue is the proxy process, okay? Right. The rules for how corporations conduct shareholder votes, such as when directors stand for re-election at annual meetings, most of the time, management wins in the landslide, and that is true, because if, if you have one voter putting up something asinine, okay, then they're going to vote it down. Sure. Everybody has a vote. That's how it's supposed to be. But shareholders occasionally revolt over excessive pay or mismanagement, and that's where you don't have the board putting up a motion to oust all their buddies that are in the executive suite. Right. Okay, so you want to, you know, everybody's supposed to have a say as a shareholder, and it's just putting it to a vote. Right. What is so worrisome about putting things to a vote if they're that ass control you know right. exactly so you know it really gets you last year the uh, National Association of Manufacturers helped from the Main Street Investors Coalition to oppose what it calls politics politic politicization there we go of the investment process to argue fund managers and boards should focus on maximizing profit profits well they can everybody still gets a vote sure. that's what's being misled here you know one of the priorities is changing the shareholder voting process. And if it was so easy to do, why does the chairman of the SEC have to lie about why he's doing it right. and go with these emails? That's what you want to keep in mind. You know, um, you want to have that conversation. That's great. But why are you going to lie about the, the people behind it in terms of veterans, Marines, oh, teachers, man. retirees? Yeah. Uh, although the coalition has other members, NAM provided most of its initial funding according to a person with knowledge of the arrangement who spoke. The Manufacturers Association represents corporate giants such as Exxon and Chevron. Nothing like big oil. NAM said in a statement that it didn't fund 60 plus or direct any advocacy efforts on the SEC issues. Chevron wouldn't comment on the coalition, but acknowledged in a statement that it sometimes works on trade associations to help inform their understanding of it's the education. issues. education. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you know, public comment is a great deal because that's citizens public commenting oh, yeah. on things at issue. It's a bummer when you have, you know, one of the most powerful people out there, the chairman of the SEC, um, spending a bunch of BS to get his way. So National Association of Manufacturers. Yeah, and so when that you is not hit, the American citizens. In the United 60 plus, uh, the, the nonprofit group calls itself an advocate for senior citizen issues. It routinely takes money from corporation advocates for their causes on yeah. issues varied 
as sugar subsidies in Alabama Utility Commission. Well, like, sugar subsidies, that helps the um, retirees, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Tom, it's remarkable, yeah. man. <laughs> Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Basil Chapman has just announced a live 90-minute webinar he'll be conducting for subscribers to his daily trading newsletter, The Opening Call, which will be taking place Tuesday, November 19th from 5 till 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, titled A Comprehensive Review of the Chapman Wave Techniques and Market Outlook Ahead for 2020. This is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial to The Opening Call while gaining access to Basil's live subscriber event taking place later this month. With some stock picks up 15 to 30% this year alone, Basil will review many of the Chapman Wave techniques that helped in their successful analysis, as well as providing the sectors and stocks that he thinks will be of importance heading into 2020. For all the details, check out the opening call on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, we had a little movement in this market. Uh, Dow's down 110, NASDAQ's off 5, S&P's off 7. You know, not that that's a huge amount, but uh, compared to where we were, it is a huge amount. Especially pre-market, man. I think the S&P's were up there at 31, 32. Yeah. We're 18 points off of the pre-market high up there. Yeah. 31, 32, 50. You're, so. you're right back almost to the lows of yesterday. So the yep. lows of yesterday at, uh, let's see, what time is that? At, well, we're on the air at 10.30. 31.11. 11. 11. Yep. And it hit 31.13 thus far. Yeah. So yeah. we'll see where this whole baby uh, does shake out today. Of course, we get our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, coming up uh, this afternoon, so don't forget about that. Um, if we do take a look at the GDX, uh, one of the Tigers want to know resistance levels. Um, the GDX, to me, I don't... I don't see a resistance level here. I mean, you get a supply line that's laying out at 28, you know, that's been trading there a lot. This push yesterday with volume is, is a good push. Your swing point has uh, 79 million at 28.18. So that's your, your number. You need uh, big volume there. And yeah. I don't think we'll get to that point out here today, but I think what you are going to get is that the 
um, you know, the note and bond market continues higher. Yep. If the note and bond market continues higher, that gives gold some breathing room. That's what it really comes down to. Do you know what I mean? I was just going to pull up the yield as we wrap it up. What are we sitting at? 1.78%. Not bad. No. Not bad at all. Yeah. Last three months, uh, look at that, 1.45 to 1.9. That was quite a run it had, man. <laughs> that really was. <laughs> Seriously. You get man. back down there and think about those refinances. And as we said, Basil Chapman coming up 5 p.m. tonight. He'll be live at noon as well. I yep. encourage people, go over there, sign up. You can take an hour and get familiar with his newsletters. And then you get to watch the Tiger Technician's Hour at noon before that workshop at 5 o'clock. I love it. Totally. Stay right there, folks. we get got Think of Swim coming up next. And I'm Mr. Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes. Dave White. I'll be back this afternoon. Thanks, pal. Thanks, man. Bam! Go get him, folks.